What's up Shark Week fans, Dr. Allison Gallagher here, coming at you answering some of your top questions for this year's Shark Week. Ever since I was a young kid, I have been obsessed with sharks. So this has been something I've really wanted to study, pursue uh, my whole life. I've always wanted to find ways to get close to sharks, uh, and I've been very fortunate to be able to do that. The rarest shark that I've ever encountered has to be in the deep sea. So the team that I work with at Beneath the Waves, uh, a nonprofit organization studying oceans and sharks, we started doing some deep sea research. We actually did this on a few Shark Week shows in the years past, but we put these cameras down into really, really deep waters, and we have been really lucky to see what we call a blunt-nosed six-gill shark. This is one of the prehistoric shark species in terms of its age, very old, doesn't have a dorsal fin, huge. They can get as big or bigger than tiger sharks, and we find them about 3,000, 4,000 feet deep in the middle of the pitch black twilight zone. The most unforgettable encounter I've ever had with sharks is definitely the first time I dove with a tiger shark in the wild. 2010, I was doing research at Tiger Beach with my PhD advisor, Neil Hammerschlag, and I just jumped in. First dive was supposed to be a checkout dive and a huge 10, 12 foot female tiger shark just came right by my face. Uh, it was unlike anything I'd ever experienced to that point. I'd been with sharks before in the water, but just having that one-on-one -on -one encounter uh, at 40 feet on a reef uh, is something really special and I'll never forget it. If I was a shark, what species would I be and why? Uh, I think for me, it's got to be tiger shark. You know, get to live in the tropics, migrate all over the ocean, see so many cool places, um, get to hang out in one of my favorite types of ecosystems, which are seagrass meadows. Uh, and, you know, because our planet is warming and, and waters are changing in temperature, tiger sharks are actually expanding their range. This is some research that uh, I've been involved with some colleagues, and um, that's interesting. Yeah, so we might be seeing tiger sharks in places like Iceland uh, in the next couple decades. Who knows? But uh, tiger sharks are just the best. Artificial reefs are just amazing because they provide shelter, oftentimes food, uh, and new habitat for species. Uh, you know, a lot of these animals, big sharks migrate, you know, hundreds to thousands of miles per year in the ocean. So if we put something like an oil rig or uh, an old decommissioned oil rig, for example, uh, out in the middle of these migratory pathways, you know, that can sometimes create new habitat and, and really change the life history of these animals and, you know, alter what they're doing and change their behaviors. I was really fortunate to be able to spend some time with a lot of sharks underneath an oil rig for our show this year. Monsters under the rig, check it out, really exciting. What fascinates me most about tiger sharks is their broad diet and their ability to be flexible. But we know now that tiger sharks eat pretty much everything, birds, um, inorganic items, other sharks, marine mammals, sometimes land animals that make their way into the ocean, fish, everything. So they have really adapted. And for me, that's just the coolest thing is that these animals are actually adapting to a changing world. My most memorable experience with tiger sharks has to be the first time I went to Tiger Beach. This is probably close to 15 years ago now. And, you know, just being underwater with five, six, seven, eight big tiger sharks at once, uh, it's like I was living in the pages of my childhood books. I have been bitten by a shark once and it was totally my fault. It actually happened uh, during tagging. Um, you know, I got a little careless with removing the hook from a small Caribbean reef shark uh, and it actually bit me a little bit on my finger, just a, a little bit of a cut. Uh, it did require a little bit of uh, patchwork, but um, you know, for all the you know hundreds and thousands of hours that I've spent around sharks and particularly in the water with them, including in baited situations, you know, I've never had a shark really come after me and try and bite me. So, you know, I'm really fortunate. And I think that really speaks to the fact that these animals really don't want a lot to do with us if they don't have to. What do I do in my free time if I'm not researching, studying, or filming with sharks? Well, I really like hockey. I'm a huge fan of watching hockey. Boston Bruins, my favorite team, they are the best. Um, I love being outside, spending time with my family, um, trying to get to the beach as much as possible and sort of relax. I do travel a lot for my work, so uh, in my free time, um, I really like to just hang out, chill out, hang out with friends, and uh, you know sometimes play a little sports too. It's important to study the behavior of sharks because this lets us better understand them and eventually create more improved and effective conservation measures. We know that many species of sharks, including the really big ones, migrate a lot. And until we know where they spend their time, how they use their time, and what areas are most important for them, 
we're not going to really be able to effectively conserve them. So even though tagging of sharks and tracking them using things like satellite tags is very popular now, and you know thousands and thousands of sharks have been you know studied with this technology, we still have a long way to go. Uh, and the more we know about these animals, the better we'll be able to protect them. And also, the ocean is changing all the time. So we need to continue these studies to see really how these animals are adapting.